blog sermon this morning from two preachers. Charlie Platt grew up here at Mac Plymouth, participating in uh, youth group and mission trips, and he's preached here before in the fall of 2017, so some of you may have heard him before. Uh, Charlie has had a few different experiences living in intentional community, notably with Lutheran Volunteer Corps in Chicago and at Holden Village in Washington State. Dustin Moretz has been a member here at Mac Plymouth for uh, just about a year and a half, but it feels longer to me. Uh, and he's a transplant to the Twin Cities from Michigan. He's also experienced intentional community, his longest experience being with the Cormula community in Northern Ireland. As we prepare for this sermon about intentional community, listen in this reading from Acts about the intentional community of the early church. What was their vision and how do you imagine it turned out for them? If you're following along in your bulletin, uh, I inserted the wrong scripture passage. So uh, you, can, uh, you can read from Acts chapter 4, uh, verses 32 to 35. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul. And no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. May these words be to us our light and our life. Good morning once again. Good morning. Uh, I'd like to say thank you very much um, for being here this morning. I'd like to say a special thank you to Corinne for uh, putting Dustin and I together because it's been such a privilege to connect with Dustin about this experience. Um, it's been kind of an unusual um, thing to reflect about. It's an unusual experience. Um, so it's been a privilege to connect with him. Um, uh, Dustin and I thought it would be a helpful thing to talk about some of the history and background of these communities. Um, so I was hoping, Dustin, maybe you could tell us about some of the history about the Corimila community. Sure. So the Corimila community was founded uh, in the early 60s. It was founded by a man named Ray Davey. And Ray Davey was a chaplain in the YMCA and was uh, deployed during World War II to uh, support the troops and was actually imprisoned um, in Dresden. And he witnessed firsthand the bombing of Dresden and it really changed his entire life and perspective about war and conflict and violence. And so whenever he returned to Belfast, Northern Ireland, where he was from, he decided to start an ecumenical Christian community. Um, and it couldn't have been founded at a better time because Shortly after the community was established, the Troubles broke out in Northern Ireland, and the Troubles were a conflict between um, Irish Catholics who wanted to join the Republic of Ireland and British Protestants who wanted to remain part of the United Kingdom. And the conflict went um, from the late 60s until the late 90s, and it was uh, during that period the Cory Meal community really lived into its role being a center where people could connect, could dialogue, could explore peace and conflict and reconciliation, and even after the conflict, uh, the Peace Center continues to exist and plays host to people from all over the world to explore what it means to live well together. So I was wondering if you could share a little bit about Holden Village. I'd be glad to. So Holden Village um, is historically a, a town that was built for miners in the Cascade uh, Mountain Range in Washington. And around the 1920s, there was a mine that was, uh, that was built for mining copper. And in the 50s, that mine went out of business and uh, the miners decided to donate it to a Lutheran pastor who made it into a year-long intentional community and retreat center. And so since the 60s, there's been people living there year-round, uh, living intentionally, living together, um, and also welcoming retreat guests every summer. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about it. Nice. So just to tell you all, we decided to break our conversation down today into three themes. Uh, the first is uh, one heart and mind. 
The second is sharing all they had, and the third is no needy persons. Because we have so many thoughts about living in community, and it was a really formative experience for us. So we thought that that might help structure our thoughts, because whenever we were trying to chat uh, beforehand and plan this conversation, we ended up talking for like an hour. So this will not take an hour. <laughs> so Charlie, I was wondering if you could start with our theme, One Heart and Mind. How does that connect to your experience at Holden Village? Yeah. Um, what came to mind most for me when thinking about this particular part of the passage is the experience of belonging in a place like Holden Village, in, a, in an intentional community space. Uh, there's, there's a really special feeling that comes with being an intentional community, and that is being able to look around a space, being able to look at people that I've come to know, and think to myself, this community wouldn't be the same if that person wasn't here. Like, there's uh, something very special about feeling that, that I belong here, there's a place for me, I'm needed here. And that, that feeling isn't constant. I don't feel that all the time when I'm there, but it's somewhat in the air. It's in the culture of the place that belonging is a part of the experience. And that's something that I'm really, have been holding on to since then. And I'm wondering for you, what does this passage make you think about when Corey Mila? So I was thinking a lot um, about how belonging at Cori Mila is really created through a shared sense of purpose. Because the Cori Mila community, it's an ecumenical Christian community, but people come there from all over the world who may not be Christian. They might be Muslim or Hindu or Jewish or atheist, agnostic, spiritual, but not religious. And so people come with very uh, strong differences of opinion, um, which it's funny because the word Cori Mila um, was the name of the hill where the, just happened to be the name of the hill where the Peace Center was established. But um, linguists later on discovered that Cori Mila actually means the place of lumpy crossings, which makes so much sense whenever you think about it being a place where people are coming with so much difference. Um, and at Cori Mila, despite all those differences, we are really united by this shared sense of purpose. And that was to really create peace and reconciliation in the world. And people were really interested in that concept. And that really helped kind of, no matter what differences we had, helped really kind of draw us together in a shared sense of, of community. Hmm. So when we were looking at this scripture passage, one pa uh, part of the passage that really resonated for both Dustin and I is this portion talking about how the disciples shared everything. Um, that was something that was inherent to both of our experiences in these communities. And for you, when you think about sharing everything, what does that what does that make you think of at Cori Mila? Well, something that we were chatting about is that um, living in community, uh, especially an intentional community, is nothing short of a miracle. Um, because at the Cori Mila community, we all lived in a shared house and accommodation together. So most of us had roommates. There were minimal bathrooms. The kitchen was extremely small. And you really kind of run into, um, you know, each other. and you're living and working together side by side. And that can be really beautiful in terms of the sharing, and it can also be really difficult. So I personally am an introvert, and living in community was so like spiritually and emotionally rewarding and physically exhausting. And so sometimes I would just need to go on a walk. And everyone knew that my thing was, and the evening would come around, the sun was starting to set, I would go grab a fluorescent vest and a flashlight and go on a walk by the beach. And it was extremely relaxing, but that was what I needed to be able to restore and heal myself and come back to bring my full self to community. Um, and it ended up being kind of a, a gift because people were like, well, if you had a hard day, you should go on a walk with Dustin. And, <laughs> and you should just like debrief, talk it out, get away for a while, and then come back. Um, and so it makes me think a lot about the difficulties of sharing all that you have, but how that can be so rewarding at the same time. So what about you at Holden Village? Yeah, there's so much that comes to mind. Uh, I think similarly that at Holden Village, whole lives are intertwined. So people that we live together, um, we're working together, we're going on hikes together, all things are shared together, like our whole lives are together. And when in reflecting about that, I think one special thing about that is that the people that I lived with, I got to see these people in their full selves. I think in... Uh, 
in society, um, like in, in cities typically, it's easy to compartmentalize ourselves. It's easy to be, uh, show up as one kind of person in a workspace and another uh, type of person in a different space. But, but in a space like Holden Village, there's no other space to go to. So all, like a full self is really present there. And I remember being with other people in these communities and knowing, wow, this person has all these different gifts. This person can do this thing, this thing, this thing. And being able to see all of that in one person um, was really special, but also challenging, I think, what you're saying, because uh, there's no place to go. You know, all of these uh, gifts and challenges are all in this one space. Um, and that, I think, is a very special thing. Absolutely. So, yeah. Well, and the difficulties around that remind me of, so our third, team, or third theme around no needy persons. Mm. So how did that come up at Holden Village? Yeah. Um, well, one... Uh, as we were talking about this, one thing that came to mind for me is that um, at Holden Village, when people are living there, um, all things are provided for people that are volunteering or are guests there. Um, so people are provided with uh, food, with uh, a room to stay in, um, with all kinds of gear that they might need. Um, so a really, what comes with that is a really interesting uh, lifestyle, which is that there's really no need to exchange. There's no need um, to give money for something because all things are provided. Um, so to live in a place where there's no exchange um, was a really interesting lifestyle. Um, and it's something that I think about a lot. It's when I'm going about my day, I'm paying for things. It's like, wow, at Holden Village, it's a, it's a very different way of living, that there's no need for this similar kind of transaction. And I think that makes a different kind of relationship with people when there's not a, a transactional kind of system. Mm -hmm. So when you think about no needy persons, what, what comes to mind for you? Well, on top of being able to walk around and not forget your wallet everywhere because you don't need it, mm -hmm. probably I would think about um, the most is accommodating people's spiritual and emotional needs in community. Because whenever people come to community and they're living together, you know, we're bringing our, our broken selves to community. And we all have our own traumas and, um, and fuses and shortcomings. And so in community, you have to really learn how to uh, support one another. So what, the example of me going on a walk and people being like, you should go walk with Dustin, um, is like a kind of an example of how we all kind of have to chip in to support one another and make sure that people are cared for. And at Corey Mila, because we're also, we are an intentional community, but we're also a nonprofit organization. And so um, because of funding reasons, we had to restructure and uh, some people had to be let go and it left holes in our community and kind of for a while really affected us. Um, and so we really had to be there for one another to you know offer a shoulder to lean on whenever times were tough. And whenever like we just had a bad day or something was chaotic at the center there was a massive group and because we're on the, the top of a cliff a cliff like the um, tour bus that was carrying people couldn't get up the cliff and they had to walk up and we had to go help them and things could be really chaotic and we had to be really present with one another to make sure that people felt supported and people's needs were taken care of on a kind of a holistic basis it's physical it's spiritual and it's emotional too hmm. So as, as we said, this is something that we could talk about for a long, long time. Um, but as we're coming to a close for this particular conversation, uh, when you think about your experience at Corey Mila, uh, what kind of lessons do you think about for your life here in the Twin Cities? What, what kind of things are you thinking about that you, um, that you could take into your life today from this experience that you had? Sure. So I think that all the lessons that I learned from community from that community specifically can be applied to really any community you're a part of. But what makes it so exceptional is that whenever you're living in an intentional community, everything is amplified. And so, you know, even here at Mac Plymouth, you know, there are lessons, the same lessons around taking care of a each other's needs around being in one heart and mind. But at Corimila, it was that much more evident because we couldn't get away from each other. And those things came up and we had to discuss them and work through them. So I think that I've been trying ever since coming back from Northern Ireland to think about how 
in any community I'm a part of, whether it's this church community, whether it's at my workplace, where some of these lessons are coming up and what I need to think about whenever there are problems at work, thinking about some of the issues that arose at Corimila and making those connections. So I think that it's finding those um, themes in every other part of my life, and I'm still learning um, about how to do that, how to make sure I'm remembering those lessons. But what about you? What are you, as we're closing, what are some of your kind of concluding thoughts about your experience? Yeah, well, as you said, there are many things, but I think what comes to mind for me is that as we're talking, all of the great things that come out of intentional community, for me, they're all different ways. There are different ways of talking about belonging, different um, kind of shades of what it feels like to be in a space that allows to belong. Um, and just how important that is to be in spaces where I feel like I belong, I'm a part of this place, um, I'm needed here. Um, and that's something that I am really trying to find in all different spaces that I'm in, that I belong in that space. Mm -hmm. um, and that I feel all people need that kind of experience. That's something that I saw again and again, just the importance and how healing it can be to be in a place that people belong. Um, so Dustin, thank you so much for having this conversation. And this is something that we would like to share with all of you. If you'd like to talk with us, um, we would really enjoy that. So um, thank you very yes. much for listening. Thanks, everyone.